大家好，我是罗明，欢迎回来《世纪帝国四》。那么，我们的莫莫斯科，莫斯科，莫斯科，对，莫斯科嘛，莫斯科的。我莫斯科的战役哦，依旧继续啦。对，那上一集其实有一点说错，就是当我们蒙古结束的时候，我们在第一章最开始的时候是讲到开始的那个蒙古，呃，是他以为是莫斯科是反抗当时的蒙古帝国，但并不是。对，年份有点不太一样。对，一一二三八年，这边结束已经是一二七三年。洋洋的部分，好不好？对，所以这边来到一口气哦，跳的还蛮多，一三七五年，对，直接要来了，一三七五年，我们就来吧，我们来看看吧。By 1303, Moscow controlled land that encompassed the entire flow of the Moskva River. Its ambitions didn't end there. Moscow continued to expand its borders through its wealth rather than warfare. Its tactic was to buy land from bankrupt rulers, acquiring entire towns and villages in the process. As Moscow was still a vassal of the mighty Mongol Empire, it had to send envoys to pay them tribute. And Moscow's ever-expanding borders meant more and more revenue for the Mongols. But not everyone was content with the rise of Moscow. As Moscow grew in power and influence, its Grand Prince Dmitri Ivanovich reinforced its vulnerable defenses. Its wooden fortress, the Kremlin, was rebuilt. This time, in stone. But even stone walls didn't deter its enemies. By 1368, Lithuania saw rapidly expanding Moscow as a real threat. Joining forces with the Principality of Tver, they set out to challenge its dominance. They attacked Moscow, but the stone walls held, and the enemy retreated. Tension between the factions refused to die down. In 1370, Moscow marched on territories belonging to both Tver and Lithuania, igniting a full-blown war. Years of bloody conflict ensued until Moscow's Grand Prince Dmitri Ivanovich finally defeated both enemies. Yet Moscow was still a vassal of the Mongol Empire, which still demanded tribute. Moscow must keep up the payments or face retribution. The Moscow territory is growing larger. It needs to be given to the Mongol Empire. The territory is getting larger and larger. The Moscow territory needs to be constantly collecting the Mongols' tribute to make them more powerful. This task makes me feel like, hmm. 
Trade routes between Rus settlements supported a vibrant economy, which in turn allowed Moscow to pay forward tribute to the Golden Horde. If Moscow was to avoid a Mongol attack, Dmitri would have to meet the Horde's tribute demands before the Khan's patience expired. Moscow's primary means of raising the taxes demanded by the Horde was through trade with nearby Rus towns. But Prince Dmitri would have to keep his traders safe from raids by opportunistic bandits that stalked the countryside. While Moscow's trade was strong, Dmitri could bolster his income if he could locate additional trade partners. Trade routes brought wealth, but safe passage was not a given with bandits stalking the roads. Increasing Moscow's income required locating additional trade partners. 
To do so, the Muscovites needed to scout the land in search of new settlements. As the deadline for payment of tribute approached, Dimitri had to quicken his efforts to collect the necessary taxes. With the Golden Horde paid, the Muscovites could concentrate on expanding their territory until the next payment was due. As Moscow grew in riches, the Khan continued to demand taxes. If Dmitri did not pay, he would face the swift vengeance of the Horde. As Prince Dmitri sought to increase Moscow's power, he turned from trading with his neighbors to purchasing their lands outright. If he owned the surrounding lands, Moscow would be the dominant center of Rus' power, and Dmitri would be secure as Grand Prince. 
Moscow's power grew as it absorbed the lands around Kolunma. The town would now generate gold without the need for taxing traders. Есть, ладно. На казе Пурузуме. Before he could purchase the settlements, Dmitri needed to prove he could provide safe passage for the traders and their goods. Соглашаемся. 
И справляйтесь. Давай. Я готов. Возвратай готовность. Сделаю. На казино виз. Жаловайтесь нельзя. Исправляйте. Дело есть. Начну трудитесь. Работа ждет. На казе псие возможно есть. Начну трудитесь. Лужи на касну. Будем продаться. Чего делать надо мной? И схожу в войне. На брани ты такое делать тебе надо бно. Уразумею. Устроено будет. Dmitry purchased the lands of Troitsky and extended Moscow's power. Bandits remained a threat on the roads, however. The Khan once again demanded taxes from the growing Rus provinces, but this time the price to keep the horde at bay was higher than ever before. Приук 
Приготовляйтесь все.哇！被毒命爆局啊！忘记，对，忘记一边招那个防守的部队了，知道吗？忘记编造防守的部队了。Слушайте все! Бойни, не справляйтесь! Слушай наказ! Уразуме! Слушаюся! Бойни, на броню подавляйтесь! Соглашаемся!
На казино везуть. На пресс по скору. Жаловайтесь, это нельзя. Идти надо на помолку. Что есть труд, ага? Ой, не, не справляйтесь. Радуйся, да, сделаю. The village of Kalin was ready to trade with Moscow. But more traders on the roads meant an increased threat of bandit raids. Ich bin ja Ich 
Я здесь. Иду. Построено будет. Лучник готов есть. Лук готов есть. Рцы яко делать. Слушай наказ, следуй наказам. Исполняйте. Готовы 所以其实骑兵是比较适合的 The Rus of Kalin now recognize Dimitri as their Grand Prince. Будете воине сделать. Следую приказам. Брать будет. Приближайтесь, обоязливи. Приказывай. Понял. Понял. Брань будет. 
Лучник готов. Дело сделано. Сделаю. Следую приказам. Как слушаетесь? Будем сражаться! Я угодно есть. Исполняйте. Едем войны. Сделано будет. Ладно, есть. Каков наказ есть? Слушай. Готовы будете, войны. На казе Новис. Будем сражаться. На казе суть. Добро. Дело, что велено есть. Брать будем. Ладно, теперь дело сделано. Лучник готов. Слушай наказ, Нов. На казе ноль. Идти надо на помолу. Что есть трудного? The small settlement at Pereslav welcomed Muscovite scouts and the prospect of trade. Слушайте все. Лук готов. Понял. Понял. Дело сделано. Добро. Брань, брань завет. Врядуюсь мы. Слушай, на приближайтесь обоизливее. Войни, исправляйтесь. Исправляйтесь. Ладно, есть. Готовились мы, да. 
没有石头了，要把砍树吧。到底要让我买了没？我也不知道。对啊，我的商人回去了没？回来了吧？我还没，我还在走。在<笑>走。He had raised Dmitri purchased Karislav outright. Moscow's power over the region was now secure. With the surrounding principalities under Dmitri's sway, Moscow was now the preeminent power among the Rus. The time was coming. To throw off the Mongol yoke. I told the sky. Time is up. So the next episode will officially declare the Mongol Empire. Yes, this is the next episode. I actually used the wrong thing. I used the soldiers to make a yoke. This I think is not good. I think it's not good. I think it's not good. We still need to change the name. 那个就是其实骑兵会比较好啦。对，我们来看一下影片吧。Medieval Moscow, Muscovy, was shielded by vast forests, which slowed the advance of approaching enemies. These woodlands were also an abundant source of timber for building wooden forts. Forts built within urban settlements were called Kremlins. The original Kremlin in Moscow, from at least the 12th century, was made entirely from wood, as were all buildings in the city. To understand how these forts were constructed, a scaled-down version is being made. Moscow built forts in vast numbers. You can see they had an ingenious way of doing it. These standard lengths of wood have V-shaped notches cut into the end, and then they can be simply overlaid into a box construction, which forms a cell. No joints, no nails, just the sheer weight will keep them in place. Stacked together both vertically and side by side, These cells created astonishingly resilient walls. They were far better at withstanding attacks from mighty siege engines 
than simple vertical palisades. And the box construction of Muscovy forts also had a number of other advantages. By filling them with earth or with stone, it made them not only stronger than a single wooden palisade, but it also gave them sturdiness and elasticity, which could better absorb the impact of projectiles from trebuchets. And the other advantage of these box structures is that they could be prefabricated. Now, the first step in that process is taking off the bark. This stops wood-eating insects from sheltering beneath the bark and allows the wood to dry, preventing it from rotting. By taking off the bark, this wood will then last for years. Prepared timbers could be stored and then assembled into cells wherever and whenever needed. And some cells, both on the walls and the gatehouse towers, were not filled with earth. Instead, they were left empty for defenders to use. From the 13th century, some towers were made of stone and brick, like this one at Chertsk Castle, built in 1388. When stone wasn't available locally, red brick was the material of choice. Of course, the advantage of using bricks is that they're easy and cheap to manufacture. They're uniform, so easy to build with. And it's these red bricks which give the distinctive look to Eastern European castles, which we can still see to this day. Stone and brick towers could be built much taller than wooden ones. This allowed Moscow's defenders to spot potential attackers sooner, keeping their enemies at bay. 啊，那么今天这一集就到这啦，谢谢大家观看。那喜欢我的影片，帮按赞加订阅。有什么想看的游戏，可以在下方留言告诉我，我就要去玩。我们就下期见啦，大家拜拜。